What is going on guys and welcome to the 10th video in this series. Um, in this video I'm going to try putting a um, kind of like a face feed here so you can see me talking. Let me know if that helps or if it's just um, is distracting or if you're just totally neutral about it in the comment section below. That'll help me out um, to know whether or not I should actually put this in here. But anyways, let's do our clouds now. So um, we're in this video we're going to make the clouds start moving. So, but before we do that, um, I got a couple comments about people wanting to put a background image in the background instead of uh, the moving clouds I'm making here. I don't blame you because the clouds aren't that interesting. <laughs> so to start, we are going to um, go into our game scene file right here, and we're just going to um, we're going to just add in a basic background image. So what you have to do is you basically you just get the image that you want to put in your background and you um, you have it in Finder here. You can just drag this. You can drag this under supporting files. Make sure copy items if needed is checked and um, hit finish there. So now you have I have like space.jpg as my background file that I'm going to be using. And um, to actually make it your background, you want to do a couple things here. So. Um, first, we want to create something called an SK texture, and that's going to be, um, let's type this out here. So we're going to say let background texture equals SK texture. And um, SK texture has an initializer with image named as one of its parameters. We're going to use that one, and we're going to just say space.jpg or whatever your file um, that you want the background to be is named. And um, after that, we can create our image, our SK sprite node image. So we can say let background image equal SK sprite node texture, um, background texture, uh, view.frame.size. And um, this is just going to create an SK sprite node with our given texture. And the reason that we create, um, there actually is an initializer with SK sprite node that's called image named here. Um, you can do that, except when you initialize it, the, prob the problem with that is that uh, you can't, you don't have this size parameter there. So the SK sprite node is initialized to whatever the size of your image is. Um, and that's a problem because we want our image to be basically the size of our iPhone screen, which is this view.frame.size you see right here. So now that we have our image SK sprite node up, we're going to say, um, we're just going to center it really fast. So I'll say position equals uh, view dot center, and we're just going to add it to the background, and that's really all a background image is. It's just a node that's uh, within with uh, within the node tree in SpriteKit. So I'm just going to pull this up here, and you will see. Come on, buddy. Uh, yeah, now we have a background image within our game. So you can start this, everything else is similar, you just have that background image. I'm actually going to remove this because um, in the original tutorial I was going to make it with the clouds moving across, so um, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to do that. Anyways, if you guys want to do that, uh, you're more than welcome to, totally optional, but I thought I would just put this in here. So I'm just going to comment this out. So now to the actual main subject of this video, we are going to make the clouds start moving and generating. So let's go into our ML cloud class here. And uh, we're going to create a method and we're going to call this method uh, start moving. We're gonna call the method start moving. <laughs> and it's gonna be a really simple method. Um, it's just going to be, we're going to use our SK action move left I'll say um, move by x, um, a value of minus 10, y value of zero, and a duration of one second. I usually just use one second when I'm using all these moving actions. It's just a really, it's like an easy standard to go by. And then we're gonna do, we're gonna repeat this action over and over again, like we did with our moving ground node. So we're gonna say run action, um, 
sk action dot repeat action forever move left. So this should get that moving as soon as we call it. So um, actually when we initialize our clouds, we can just call this method start moving. And then when our clouds are initialized, at least the, the clouds that um, we use to actually populate our scene are initialized, you're going to see they're all going to be moving just like that. So that's exactly what we want. And um, now we just need to get the generation happening because all, all we're doing at this point is populating the clouds in. We need to actually get them generating as your character moves along. So to do this, we are going to go into our ML cloud generator file and we are going to create a variable up here. It's going to be, um, we're going to call this generation timer. It's going to be of the type NS timer and we'll, we'll kind of cover, um, we'll cover some of the methods for N NS timer here. Actually just one in particular, uh, the timer essentially just, you can schedule a certain function to run over and over again at a given interval. So um, let's create the generation function first. So I'm going to say function start generating with spawn time seconds NS time interval. And this type NS time interval, all it is is a, I think it's a, I think it's a double. It might be a float, but it's just a designation for um, the type used within for time intervals. So don't let this throw you or anything. Um, all this method is going to do is it's going to generate a cloud with every single time within um, a given number of seconds. So if we say three in here, it's going to generate a new cloud every three seconds. So now we need to create the coordinates of our cloud that we're going to be creating. So I'm going to say let x equal size.width over 2 plus cloud width over 2. So um, remember that our cloud generator is going to be centered within our view. So we want to have the cloud generate on the right side of that, like just outside of the view. And so if we use size.width over 2, we kind of get we get to the um, side, but half the cloud is still showing. So we add that cloud width over two to kind of have it just at the edge of our, of our view there. For um, the Y value, we're going to be using that arc for random function that we talked about. So um, I'm going to say arc for random uniform cast it to a UN32 for size dot height. And we're going to minus size dot height over two. And um, this is going to get us a random Y value from the top to the bottom of the view um, at that point. So perfect, let's create a cloud. So I'm gonna say let cloud equal ML cloud um, with the size of CG size make cloud width and cloud height here. Um, we want to set the clouds position to uh, we add this parenthesis to the uh, coordinate values that we just created. So CG point make X, Y, and we're going to add child cloud. Cool. So now we need to actually run this function. Since our, all our clouds are already moving when they're initialized, all we need to do is run this method to get the clouds to start generating. So let's go into our game scene file right here. Um, and I'm going to say cloud generator after the population method, start generating with spawn time. And, um, I already put a good spawn time in here. Uh, I thought like five seconds was probably a good spawn time. You guys can change it however you want, kind of tweak it, but you'll notice now if we run this, it's going to do exactly what, um, we are trying to do. So these are all the clouds right here that we just used to populate it. And this right here is a generated cloud. And um, five seconds after this comes along, you're gonna notice that there's another cloud. As soon as we, um, if we wait, waiting for this other cloud. And something is going on here. So let's go back into Um, oh wait, I didn't even, okay, huge mistake on my part. I didn't even like <laughs> schedule the NS timer here. Uh, sorry, let's go into, 
Yeah, this right here, this function I just made is the generate cloud method. Actually, I'll, um, let me copy this. So all this function does is it generates a single cloud. Um, right here is where we actually need to start our timer. So remember we made this variable generation timer. I'm going to say generation timer equals NS timer dot scheduled timer with time interval. Make sure you use um, the one that says target and not invocation. And with a time interval of seconds, target self. And the target is just the class that the selector we're going to be calling is in. And if that's kind of confusing, just wait a second, you'll understand it. For a selector, um, you can just put in generate cloud. And that's just the select the, um, the name of the function that we want to call in the given num in the given time interval of seconds. User info, just put nil, don't even worry about that. And put repeats to true. Okay, so let's run this. And uh, yeah, it should should be good this time. So you'll see um, the clouds going by that we just populated. You have this cloud. And there's the second cloud. Okay, so now we know our clouds are generating and uh, we're doing a good job. And um, really quick though, I didn't do the Z position either. Sorry if this video is a little bit scattered. <laughs> I'm kind of forgetting a few things, but um, for our clouds, we're just gonna set a quick Z position. So when we generate our clouds, we want to say um, cloud.z position equals negative one. And setting the Z position to negative one, like I was talking about in the end of the last video, um, I did it up here as well, just when I am creating any cloud. Um, all it's gonna do is make the clouds go behind all of our other nodes because the Z positions of every other node is zero, which is greater than negative one. So um, that's it for this video. Sorry, I was a little haphazard, but uh, I will get, um, I'll be more organized in the next one. And let me know if you guys like this video footage as well. That'll really help me out. So see you in the next video.